Hello, everybody. Crypto Katana, Andy, Team Australia is awake already. Wow, that's incredible. Let's make this quick. A lot of stuff to go through. This is the segment. What happened this week? Kind of like news you may have missed, but stuff that's very relevant, with a big emphasis on the biggest stories of the week. In my opinion, of course. <laughs> Let's jump in. And of course, now this is financial advice. Thank you to everybody on Patreon. Let's look at the first story is where we are for the week. A lot of people thought it was a bumpy ride. But when you look at the crypto market divided by Bitcoin, much, many things were up, actually, with the exception of things like Tron and Aptos, etc. But that can all be explained by tokenomics. But a lot of the layer ones are actually beating Bitcoin. When we look in dollar terms, the melting ice cube terms, you can see here, many things are up 1%, 1.5%, 2%. So it wasn't as tragic as people would believe at all, by no stretch. Let's look at the layer ones and layer twos and the metrics, the delta for the week, how much things have changed from daily active users, developers, etc. Cool stuff, indeed, all brought together by Artemis. Here you can see, it's a bit of an eye chart, but just focus in on the green. Uh, the Phantom is the gainer for the week so far. So the old ones are coming alive. Solana is the gainer for stablecoin volume for the week. Optimus for commits. Developers is Avalanche. Uh, daily active users is Arbitrum. And transactions, Arbitrum as well, up 16% for the week. So that's how you can tell exactly what's going on. And again, it's important to keep a feel for exactly which chains are winning and which ones are losing. Uh, another thing I always like to look at is the distance from all-time high, a quick reminder of where we are. And I have this thing called the zombie coefficient. If you are, say, call it a year and a half into a bull run, that includes the early bull and the bull, the full bull began on about the 11th of January. And you're still, still like 60 to 80% from your all-time high. Odds are you will not make it back to your all-time high ever again. That's just the nature of crypto and the nature of history. Maybe this time is different, but not with zombie coins. So if you see anything here rubbling around the bottom, be careful. You can see that uh, Phantom, although it had a big week, it's still 60% away from all-time high. So again, sometimes these things pop, but it has a long way to climb to get back to that all-time high as well. Um, and that's where we are. Beware as well of things that are being pushed and pumped. Now, Coinbase, a little bit of Bitcoin news. I did my Bitcoin exclusive, but this is kind of interesting because when I do what happened this week, I also incorporate stonks, as they say. So Coinbase is a hot stock, but they filed to be able to set up a Coinbase Bitcoin fund, a.k.a. another ETF. Interesting. But what concerns me with this is what happens when they already ha or have an exchange, they already hold 90% of the US spot ETFs assets, and then they set up their own fund. It gives me a little bit of concern, too much power under one roof, too much holding, too much possibility for, I don't know, rehypothecation or something. That would make me a little bit nervous. So, but that's what they're planning. Anyhow, we'll see. Another kind of ETH news. Um, there was $150 million hacked from Heco Bridge, a project, I think it was an ETH-based project, but it was stolen ETH, uh, about $150 million worth. But that is now on its way to a crypto mixer called Tornado Cash to be mixed and hidden as well. That's not good news. But again, everybody, if you're out there, the reason I share this, if you play with bridges, be careful. They're not fully baked yet. At least they weren't. But I will be talking about another kind of bridge, sort of, uh, in a few slides. And now, speaking of bridged as well, another 5 million was bridged from ETH to Solana over the last 24 hours. This is from Dbridge Finance. And again, it's just that black hole continues. It is endless. It's what we expected, but not to happen so fast in full disclosure. <laughs> I knew it would happen, but not like way before the Bitcoin having. So crazy times out there too. But I know if you watch this show, I know what your bags look like, which is good. Now, let's look at another cool thing. This is a survey from a great publication called Milk Road. And they asked all their users, thousands of users, drum roll, which blockchain 
are you using the most right now? And the answer is 40% is Solana, 32% Ethereum, 6% Binance, 4.6% Cosmos, 4.6% Avalanche, and 13.2% Other, which included, coincidentally, Base from Coinbase as well. Uh, that was a big chunk, Maddox and the others. Interesting to see, of course, it's not a true proof point of whatever he's using, but it's a very good indicator as to what people are using the most right now. And again, Solana, yet another metric where it has eclipsed, eclipsed Ethereum. Now let's talk about some of the crazy action happening on that chain right now. Perps, Solana Perps volume just surpassed $400 million in Jupiter Exchange. I entered a perp a few days ago, and the amount there was 275 million at the time. So just in two, two or three days, it added 100, 125 million dollars, which is insane growth. Just perp volume, perp volume in a short window of time on just one exchange. Crazy. It's the decks, of course. Now the other good news is Solana fees. They're capturing record fees at a record pace. This is kind of stunning when you break down all the statistics. Right now, Solana went from a fraction of 1% of fees 20 weeks ago to 16% of all fees collected across all protocols in the cryptoverse. And yesterday, 31 million of fees was collected for years and years and years. People said, Solana's not going to make it because they're too cheap. They're not making enough money. And I said, if they become the black hole, they'll make it up in volume. There's an old expression called a nickel a chicken. If you start getting like fractions of pennies, but millions of them every day, it does add up. And that's what we're seeing here. Another proof point of that is from Mert. Solana uh, revenue over the past three weeks is more than the previous five months or 20 weeks. <laughs> and this month isn't even over yet. We're only three weeks in to the month of March, which is mind blowing. The chain has really exploded like no other chain in crypto across any metric that you actually look at right now. Uh, Dex volume also hit $50 billion in just three weeks. These are staggering numbers, everybody. $50 billion, all right, for the month of March. I'm running three quarters of the way through the month of March. So it's gonna be like a, 65 70 billion dollar a month which is insane and there's more stuff coming i'll talk about some of those things too the chain as well is plugging along at 31 000, uh, 3132 transactions per second which is insane especially when you look at the number of seconds per day it's holding on uh, despite being pushed very very heavily and uh, the team are keeping the lights on very well now there's also some new features. There's a lot of new stuff coming out in crypto. But if you look up a, I'm not going to mention any name, but make up a token called Vishizzle, for example, there will be 20 of them. And it's very hard to tell what's real and what's fake. But now Solana FM have actually figured out a way to do that. So they have verified check marks. Look for that little verified token, kind of like a Twitter verified with a blue check. And you can see, uh, since there are more than 20,000 new tokens created daily on the Solana blockchain, it's very important not to be rugged. Now, when you have that number of new tokens created, I don't know if it's 20,000. This is uh, from Jupiter or Solana FM or somebody, somebody opened that PR on that. But the point is, a lot are started. Now, I used to say 98 to 99% of crypto is a scam. We're going to have to up that to like 99.5%. So beware out there. If you are playing with anything, make sure it has a verified check mark. Take the time to take the extra step to go to Solana FM or Deck Screener and do your background check as well. A very easy tell too is the amount of volume being traded. If it's tiny, like a million or so, it's probably fake. Now, other breaking news again happening. This is a new thing called Zeus coming out. It's a new execution layer for Bitcoin. And of course, it's built on Solana, but the power of Solana and Bitcoin could be quite formidable. Let me explain why. If there is a native Bitcoin collateralized stablecoin, for example, the Zeos blockchain could introduce a native stablecoin on Solana, which would provide users with a store of value basis, which would be Bitcoin, 
and a medium of, of exchange within the ecosystem. And this could be a significant advantage over other layer two solutions on the blockchain because some of them are just very, very slow and uh, they don't have a native stablecoin option. Also, DeFi. The Zeus blockchain could enable native and cross-chain DeFi applications, allowing users to access a whole range of financial services and products on both Solana and Bitcoin. This will probably disrupt other layer two solutions that may not offer the same level of interoperability. Same thing with cross-chain NFT tools, you know, maybe Ordinal, Solana NFTs, who knows, the sky's the limit. This is an exciting project to watch. I voted for this uh, on Jupiter. I'll be getting an airdrop of it. So assume I have it uh, and a lot of people in the community have it too. So watch this space very carefully. We will analyze it deeper, but it has some really cool stuff too. First of all, now points are available in Whales Market which is pretty neat. And that gives you the ability to convert points in time back into whales, if you like. The exact conversion rate, I do not know yet. Uh, I don't think anybody knows. Also, what's really interesting, so there is a layer two on Bitcoin called Stacks, which has, uh, in my opinion, an insane valuation for the amount of daily active users and all the other metrics that I look at. But the co-founder of Stacks is an investor in Zeus. Okay. I know some of you in the crypto world don't like investors, but hey, these are the people that get things off the ground, ladies and gentlemen. And hey, okay, Super Soul, I'll see you again. What's interesting is you are a founder of a chain or an, an app like Stacks, and then you invest in another one. What you're cleverly doing is hedging your bets. So in case this Zeus thing does eat Stacks lunch, you have part of what's going to eat your lunch and therefore you're protected. That's called a hedge. So we will, I will watch this space very carefully. And uh, there's also some other cool stuff coming on Solana. This Camino Finance. They are now paying people Camino if you can blog, write content, etc., about the actual chain itself. So lots of really cool, interesting stuff to be seen out there as well. They're doing things better, faster, cheaper, more value, more community building, etc. Nothing but goodness. And in a mind-blowing statistic, this blew my mind. This week, I think old Hive Mapper again on Solana has mapped 16% of the Earth's roads already. That's crowdsourced. 16%. It'll be at 20% very shortly because it's really picking up steam. And uh, a super interesting project as well. Now, let's talk about other stuff that's happening. There's a group called FTX, and there is a garage sale in progress, and buyers are lining up to buy FTX's 8% stake in an AI startup called Anthropic. As you know, AI is red hot, but according to a new report from CNBC, the shares were purchased in 2021 for about $500 million, but now they're worth billions at today's valuation. I'm not sure exactly how much, but uh, a lot of people want to buy them. And this is part of what will make FTX people whole again, as well as the appreciation in assets and other areas too. Um, Tesla, real quick. This is another interesting thing from Tesla Chan. The delivery date for Model 3s in the United States have been pushed out by three months. What does this mean? This means demand is through the roof. The original expectation was May or March. Now it's out to May or June, which shows you there's a ton of demand. And Elon Musk did plug his uh, SpaceX Dragon uh, spaceship into the International Space Center. Another mission success. And it's interesting that all the stuff this guy can do on top of the neural link stuff I shared earlier today is just mind blowing. How amazing uh, all of the stuff that's happening in the world today and how it's changing how we operate and live. It's amazing. And Tesla capacity, a lot of people think, oh, well, there's no demand. Well, there's lots of demand. We just proved that. But in addition, they have installed production capacity of 2.35 million vehicles per year. And people say, well, it'll take a long time to ramp up. No, no, that's the production capacity now. And the one thing that really took a lot of people by surprise is the amount of cyber trucks that are being produced every single day right now in Texas. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, up there in Canada. This is 371 Cybertrucks just in these little snapshots and a hat tip to Brad Sloan YouTube channel. I basically scraped them off his video 
so you could get a visual for what so many cyber trucks look like. They are pumping these out, and literally there are trucks coming in to pick them up and bring them across the country real fast. Just spoke to somebody in the community, and they saw a bunch of Highland Model 3s on these big trailers being delivered to Florida. So these cars are made in California, and they're brought all the way across the country on these big trucks to Florida. So it's fascinating to watch. Now, other good news for our friends in India. KuCoin is coming to India per Marty Party. Uh, that is very good that they passed regulatory approval and is now open to Indian crypto users. KuCoin is not allowed in the United States, but it's allowed in India. Okay, and India hammered crypto for the longest time. So that's really saying something. You know, if I think what India has figured out is you can't stop crypto. It's inevitable. It's coming. And just a little bit of macro news, something that you all need to be aware of. This is from Gabor. This is a $1.2 trillion spending bill, over 1,000 pages. Okay, it was released at 2 a.m. today. That was yesterday. And it got approved 10 hours later. No human could possibly read a thousand pages and digest it in 10 hours. Well, first of all, be up all night and then digest it in 10 hours. Thank you, Andrew. This is insane. And what they sneak in there, ladies and gentlemen, a ton of what they call pork into the bill that nobody will ever see or realize. This is how government works. It's corrupt as hell. And this is what happens as a result. And I cover this in this morning's video. Why we Bitcoin? Another reminder, the U.S. government added $1.2 trillion overnight in debt. Thanks to this big stack of paper that nobody will ever read. And everybody just plugs in, whatever the lawmakers do, plugs in whatever they want so they can line their pockets. And it's a criminal enterprise. <laughs> I hope I got, don't get taken down for saying that. I don't mean no, the government officials are doing great work. But the debt is getting really high, really fast. Thank you all for coming, everybody. I'm going to love you, leave you. I'll see you tomorrow. I've got to go back to work now on the weekend Q&A, which will be Sunday, noon Pacific, tomorrow in about 22 hours. So I'll see you then. Thank you as well to the mods in the chat and everybody for coming. And uh, back to work, everybody. Enjoy the spring. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.